Hi guys, Steve up at the property again. And uh, I wanted to come up today to uh, get uh, some burn barrels. Last week, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I was going to get burn barrels that day. I had, uh, I think, four leads on Facebook Marketplace. And one lady said uh, to, she'd get in contact with me in the morning if she's going to be available. She wasn't. Uh, another guy said he's only open Monday through Friday because it's at his business. Uh, I forget what happened with the third guy and there was a fourth guy that had them free and that was about 40 minutes away. So I drove there when I got there, she says, oh, sorry, just gave away the last one. So unfortunately there was no burn barrel uh, making and burning of stuff last time, but I'm hopeful of getting that done today because the guy who has the business is a pallet recycling place. So uh, it looked like, you know, he had pictures of lots of barrels. So I'm sure I should be able to get, I want to get like three. Uh, I'm going to make one into a burn barrel. And I was thinking of uh, the other two for uh, barrels that I'm going to use to burn out stumps. Well, here we are. Widow's pallet and recycling. As you can see, he does pallets and he has a lot of drums too. I got my three drums. There was food product in there. Let's see, I didn't really. Uh, concentrated apple juice, I believe. Okay. It's uh, a little higher up here. Still some snow and it's a lot colder. All right, guys. Let's head back to the property. I got three barrels. Uh, I'll start with one. And I'll keep the other two. I'm not sure what I want to do with them. I'm thinking of um, making at least one of them uh, a barrel that you could put over a stump and use that to burn a stump out. I got my DeWalt cordless drill. I'm gonna cut some holes in the side of the can to get some air in there. And I got this, the step drill bits. Now for cutting the square box out of a, near the bottom of the steel barrel, um, I mean, I have some, a steel saw blade that I had for my regular Sawzall. I grabbed that, but I went to the depot and I got a Milwaukee Sawzall blade, torch, carbide teeth, 50 times life, six inch blade. And like I mentioned earlier, my battery powered Sawzall, I didn't have a battery powered one. And I don't have the power up here at the property, so I got this through uh, Amazon. All right, we'll get the steel barrels. I'll probably work on it on the tailgate. I'm going to put two in the garage. One neat, neat thing about my truck, push button, it's got a step. Listen, I'm 59 years old. Climbing up and down on this tailgate without this step would have been really, would be really difficult. So I'm thrilled to have this. A grazi, a grazi, carozi, sharing the value of nature. Product of chili. Okay. 
Sorry, my hands are just too cold. And it's, it's not working so hot, so. Put on the gloves. Do one or two more. It's taking a lot of effort to go through there. I thought it would be a lot easier, but put a couple more in. But the thing is, I'm going to be cutting a, you know, good size square, and I'm trying to leave it from the bottom so the ash can, can fill up. And from what I've heard from some people is. You know, when the ash, after the fire, the ash gets wet, they leave it, I guess, sitting right side up. And the wet ash will just keep the bottom of the barrel wet and it rots. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, store them upside down. Um, and if possible, maybe, uh, you know, don't, you know, once they're cool off I'll put them in the uh in the garage keep them out of the weather four holes just so I could with the saws all go one two three four and I'll have this big spot here where <coughs> you know, once the fire starts to die out I want to stoke it up a little bit I can just point the leaf blower right that hole and get it going again you know with this big hole and the other holes this that, that'll be plenty to uh for this for the to make the let it'll be plenty to get the fire to breathe. All right, let's cut this out. <laughs> it would help if <laughs> you could see the actual hole I'm cutting. There we go. All right, this is uh, good enough. I'm gonna flip it over, I'm gonna throw some crap in it, and we're gonna burn. It's like a Yule log. Remember that? Uh, well, maybe that was just a local thing, but uh, our local TV station, Channel 11, had what was called the Yule log. And during Christmas, they would uh, just put the camera on a fireplace and play Christmas music. And they would put it on all day. You'd have hours and hours of this Christmas music with the fireplace on TV. So this is kind of like our Yule Log, <laughs> Steve's Cabin TV show. 
Maybe for uh, next Christmas, I'll do a burn barrel and play Christmas music. This stuff is just uh, too wet to burn. So what we'll do is we'll leave it here. <laughs> Hi, guys. And uh, we're back. Last up here on was it Tuesday? Tuesday. Today's Sunday. Had a little trouble getting the fire burning last time because... This stuff had been rained on for quite a number of days. So I brought the gas tank out. Uh, I brought some cardboard and more newspaper and stuff from home. My Wendy's bag from breakfast this morning. By the way, the, what is it? Sausage, egg, and Swiss on croissant from Wendy's is very good. So we're going to get this going, rake a little bit. Put some cardboard in there, throw some gas on it, start the fire. Let's get this going. My daughter gave me this, hopefully it works. All right. That went up pretty good. Probably too much gas. Wow, everything I had thrown in there is just about done.
Well, when I wanted to do the walk around before, I just realized it stopped the video. So we'll do the walk around now. This is uh, a few minutes later as I have, um, I went out to do the SD cards and batteries in the trail cams. And uh, yeah, it's chowed down what I left in here. It's just about all gone, I guess. Yeah. Which is good. So, um, very happy with the performance and how this worked out and how it quickly was able to eat up my uh, burn pile, which uh, is, is, is considerably smaller. One flaw I have with uh, what I did with this burn barrels, those holes I thought were high enough. But um, not really the case because, you know, we were burning stuff for, you know, two hours. And not really so much on that side. But um, you can see the ashes right up to those air holes. So the next burn barrel, I'll probably go up uh, a whole bunch more. Because, um, you know, what will happen is the ash will cover the... Uh, air holes and uh, the fire won't get the air that it needs to breathe real real well. So I'll go up, uh, you know, another six inches or so where that first ridge is maybe, and that should be fine. It's still going to burn the stuff, but listen, let's uh, shoot for uh, the best design possible. All right, so it was pretty much all burnt out. Um, around the perimeter, there were a couple of small, uh, thorn <laughs> branches left. And I didn't want to throw them in the pile, so I just dumped it back in there, stoked it up with the air leaf blower. They burnt up, waited five minutes maybe. And I was like, that's it, you know, I'm done for the day. So I went down to the pond with a five gallon bucket of water, just poured it in there. And uh, it, whatever was left in there, which wasn't much, you know, one little stick, it went out. It filled uh, all the way up to the hole that I cut for the leaf blower access there, that little square. And water started dribbling out, you could see on the ground there. And the bottom's full of uh, slushy ash, so it's out. It's full of water up to the uh, bottom of that hole that I cut. So it's safe to leave. So the end result is uh, we got one great burn barrel. I got two other barrels. Uh, I'm going to make one a stump burner. That's it for today's episode. Thanks for coming along. And maybe next week we'll do the, uh, the stump.